Hello, welcome to this What's New session. Today we're going to be looking at what's new in Revit 2023. Um, so we're going to start by looking at some of the new features that would work with a structural model. And the first feature is visualization of rebar in a 3D view. So what we'll do is make a selection down here and use the filter to filter out what we don't want. Uh, let's just have the rebar in there. And then we'll come over to the properties palette and we use the view visibility states and we tick view unobscured. Hit OK. That will make the rebar visible in that 3D view. And then we can come down to the level of detail tool, change that to fine, and it will change from that single line uh, to a solid line. The next new feature we're going to look at is a completely new feature. And this is Propagate Rebar. Uh, so this tool is going to allow me to copy the rebar from one element into another like element. So let's have a look. Uh, we've got a column here. So if I select some of the rebar there, I'm just going to select all the rebar in that host so it copies all the rebar. We then have propagate rebar up on the modify structural rebar ribbon. And what I'm going to do is switch it over to align by host. And then all we need to do is select the host object and that we're going to copy to. So I can select a few of these. So I can um, copy these individually. Well, we can actually do a um, group selection there. Obviously, when we do the group selection, it takes a little little bit longer for it to actually um, process that. So once we've finished uh, copying where we want to go, I'll just do a few of these. And there we go. We hit the tick. And then that will finish that command. Um, so this will also work on other objects. So I've got a footing there. So we'll try that. So again, I'm going to select my rebar. I'm just going to right click, make sure I've got all the, the rebar in that host, then use the propagate tool and then make sure it's aligned by host. And again, just select where I'd like to copy it to. Once I've finished, hit the tick. And this will also work on walls. So again, I'll make the selection and then the propagate tool appears, change it to a line by host. And you see it's even taking into account that I've got an opening in that wall. And let's hit the tick there. So that's a very, very cool new feature. The next feature then is um, again an, uh, another newish feature for rebar. So we have the ability to displace the rebar. So if I were to select the bars in that footing there, again if I do a, a select all rebar in host, um, what we can then use is the displace elements tool. So previously this wouldn't have worked on rebar, but as uh, 2023 it is now a new feature. So we can displace the rebar. Um, once it's displaced, we have the little path um, dotted line that we can add. Let's just put one over there and put one up, up there and one up there. Uh, so we can just pull it out of its host object, display what it's going to um, look like. And then obviously we have a reset option. So we can select 
the displaced bars and we can then reset and it will then put them back to where they came from. The next new feature we're going to look at is multi-leader tags or rebar. So I'm just going to open up another view for that. Okay, so I'm going to place a tag by category. Uh, let's just tag that bar there and let's reposition that tag over there. Let's just tweak that leader line. So we have a add remove host option. So basically it allows me to add a leader line to other bars within that group. So tag, tag, and then we can control how that looks. So we can have one leader line or pick which leader lines are going to show. So let's just add a tag to the other side. Okay, again, let's just drag that out, tweak that leader line, and then include those three okay so there we go we've now got multi-leader tags uh, for rebar and the next new feature we're going to look at is the um, changes that have been made to the analytical side um, so if we now jump to our analytical model first thing you'll notice is there's nothing there uh, now it's not been turned off um, so basically now the analytical model is not created in the background. So we have tools to actually force this creation. So let's just open up um, the 3D view there. So what we've got then is this analytical automation. Once we click on that, that will then activate the um, Dynamo um, window. We then click on the physical uh, to analytical for buildings um, option in there. And what it wants me to do here is um, select in Revit. So I make my selection in Revit. And uh, there's obviously a few settings in there that we could um, ch make changes to. I'm just going to run this as it is. So I click on run at the bottom. And unfortunately, this does take. Um, quite a while for this to run through. It's obviously got quite a lot of things to do in there. There's uh, quite a lot of columns and uh, beams, floors, walls, and so on. So it's not a quick process. So that's just running through. And then when it's finished, it will let me know at the bottom that it's finished. So unfortunately, we'll just have to wait for this to complete. But in the grand scheme of things, we're not talking hours. Um, we're talking um, maybe a couple of minutes or something, if that. So we must be about done. There we go. So it tells me now run is complete. And if we scroll down the Dynamo window, we can see it's giving me a list there of the analytical members that it's created. Um, and a list of the panels and openings. Um, so I can actually just close that dialog window down. And if I go now over to my analytical model, we can see there we are. It's now created that analytical model. Um, you may also notice we have um, a couple of extra tools in here where we can place analytical members in the project and we can also create the analytical panels and another new feature that we've got is um, to do with the steel connections so yeah, I'll just change my view um, so we've now got this uh, connection automation so when I activate this uh, it takes a moment for it to come up but it, again it activates the um, dynamo um, window there. So let's say I'm just going to, I'll do something um, simple here. So we've got, um, um, we'll use this, uh, I don't know, clip angle beam to beam. 
Um, so what we do in here is um, it has these little warning triangles telling you basically something needs to happen here. So I'll go select. I'm going to select, uh, for example, these beams. I'm going to come down here. So it needs a connection type to add. So we've got a little drop down here. Um, so let's just scroll down here. Um, let's just put a shear plate on that. Um, so once I've made my selection there, I hit the run um, and it processes this. And it, again, it'll tell me when it's finished. Um, we can see there it has now done a connection on there.